I want to talk to you about the reviewing your Equifax credit report. So we, we, we want to talk about a checklist you need to have. If your goal is to actually uh, review your Equifax credit report, you need to have that method I want to share with you into this conversation. So here's an overview I want you to pay attention to. So when we talk about uh, having a checklist, we're talking about ha having a method where you have a clear idea what to go for. Because the, the thing is that if you go to, uh, if you want to review your Equifax credit report, this could be because maybe you see a, a change in your, you see a sudden change in your Equifax credit report, or you have been a victim of identity theft, or you just have uh, like a, a, uh, a normal, like let's say a, a frequent sort of review of your credit report. No matter, no matter the cause, you got to have a clear idea what you look for. One thing I, I want to say here is that there is no time like uh, the present to review your credit reports, especially your Equifax credit report, because uh, based on our, our investigations, Equifax is more sort of subject to, uh, to to changes every now and then. That just maybe because uh, the, their internal processes are more sophisticated than the trans unions and um, experience. Who knows? But the bottom line here is that you got to have a clear idea. Now, remember, though, checking your credit reports regularly can help you understand what information potential lenders and creditors see when you apply for credit. And you also so also you are able to ensure that all your information is complete and accurate. We're talking about Equifax in today's conversation. So the whole idea is just to make sure that your Equifax credit report is uh, complete and accurate. Remember, though, that you do not have to pay for anything at all. I mean, you don't have to pay uh, Equifax for your uh, your credit report at all because you are entitled to a free copy of your credit reports every 12 months from each of the three nationwide credit bureaus. And you and the only thing you got to do is just to visit a website called annualcreditreport.com. So everything happens on that website. And uh, so, again, the number, the, not the number. The website is uh, www.annualcreditreport.com. And uh, so then there, once a year, you have the ability to have uh, access to uh, your Equifax credit report, your Experian credit report, but also your TransUnion credit report. So you can also create a, a, a My Equifax uh, account to get six free Equifax credit reports every year. In addition, you can uh, click Get My Free Credit Score on my on your uh, my Equifax dashboard to enroll in Equifax Core Credit. Now they charge you though they charge like uh, twenty four nine. They charge anywhere from twelve ninety nine to twenty four ninety nine. And but when when you actually enroll in Equifax Core Credit, you can get a free monthly Equifax, Equifax credit report and a free monthly Advantage Score three point credit score. And uh, so this is kind of cool, boss. Welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. So when we talk about, uh, now let's talk about your uh, Equifax uh, credit report. I, I want to really zero in on the checklist that you, you came here for. So the first the first uh, checklist, actually, checklist item revolves around your personal or identifying information. And this section of, of your Equifax credit report includes your name, address, social security number, and date of birth. And it, it may also include a previous address and your maiden or other names you have used. And that's important to verify that to make sure everything is clear there as well. Next, you have... Uh, Credit accounts. So this section includes your current and past accounts as uh, reported by your lenders and creditors to uh, Equifax. Along with open accounts, it may include accounts that you or the lender have closed or accounts such as student loans or auto loans that have been paid off. It should also include information on the type of account, the date it was open, your credit limits or loan amount, any uh, current balance on the account, and your payment history. Remember that Equifax is actually tracking that data like uh, like laser, if you will. So read this section carefully to make sure any information provided is accurate and that there are no unfamiliar accounts listed, especially on your Equifax account. Also, you want to check to ensure that the, any old information that may be uh, considered negative has been removed from your Equifax report and uh, if the appropriate amount of time has passed. So because remember that there are statutes of, statutes of limitation for certain items okay so that's important and the other thing when we talk about uh, 
your Equifax credit report, the checklist, you, you want to pay attention to uh, the inquiry information. So this section actually includes information about companies that have reviewed your Equifax credit report. There are two types of, of inquiries. You have a hard and soft. Soft inquiries do not impact credit scores. So as, as an example, the, the result from you, your, you checking your own Equifax credit report from companies extending you pre-approved credit card offers or from current creditors reviewing your credit periodically. And this is known as account review. Hard inquiries in contrast, actually occurred when a potential lender or creditor reviews your credit report because you have applied for a credit or service, such as a new loan, credit card, or cell phone. And hard inquiries remain on your Equifax uh, credit report for up to two years and may impact credit scores. So that's kind of important to have that to keep that in mind. Boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about uh, reviewing your, your Equifax credit report. I'm giving you a checklist. Another part of the checklist is actually uh, you actually reviewing bankruptcy public records. So bankruptcies and related details about them, such as the filing date and the chapter, in other words, the type of bankruptcy may also be shown on your Equifax uh, credit report. So you want to read this section carefully and make sure the information is accurate and complete. Okay, that's, that's kind of important. And we also want to talk about collections accounts. So collections accounts are a part of what we call derogatory items, and those will be uh, will be applicable to uh, your Equifax credit reports. They also, they may also be applicable to your Experian credit reports and your TransUnion credit reports. And so, when we talk about collections account, we are speaking about what? We are speaking about past due accounts that have been turned over to a collection agency. So you have somebody calling you in like, like you know at very bad times to ask you for money. That's really a, that's really a collection account. Now, examples of this accounts may be accounts with doctors, hospitals, banks, retail stores, cable companies, or mobile phone providers. As uh, with the previous sections, you want to review this uh, for accuracy and, and uh, completion. We are always talking about, uh, we are always focused on uh, accuracy and completion. You want the, uh, the data to be accurate and you want the data to be complete. And uh, what do you do if you see something that you think is inaccurate or incomplete? Well, it's very simple. You want to contact the company reporting the information. And uh, the, that's called uh, a data furnisher or a data provider. And uh, so if contacting that data provider doesn't resolve the issue, you can also file a dispute with the credit bureau. And in this case, it will be uh, Equifax. So, so if the credit bureau came from, if the data come from, if the data came from, uh, Equifax, then you actually contact Equifax. If you find information in your credit report you think may be the result of fraud, then uh, you have a, 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 an entire set of uh, procedures to actually follow to make sure that Equifax corrects the issue. Now, remember that checking your own credit report doesn't impact credit scores. Okay, so that's an that's important element to keep in mind and it's not going to lower your Equifax credit score or your TransUnion credit score or your uh, experience credit score. Here is the approach I want you to really think about. So when we talk about reviewing your Equifax credit report, you need to really, you really, you need to understand that in some cases you might be eligible for an additional credit report. Let's say you are actually, uh, you know, you, uh, you, you found a problem and uh, you actually uh, like your credit score was uh, 500 and you wanted to see if there is an evolution in the credit report in the credit score in that case in that case and others there could be a possibility for you to uh, to to be uh, to have an additional credit report to be eligible for an additional credit report so another way you can receive a copy of your free credit report from the three major credit bureaus is by meeting one of the following requirements as uh, outlined in the fair credit reporting act so if you meet one of these requirements, you are entitled to one additional free copy of your free of your credit reports during uh, any 12 month period. So you are unemployed and intend to apply for employment within 60 days. That's really, uh, I mean, a lot of folks actually took advantage of this uh, feature 
during COVID. I mean, people were on a black crazy and the, they were just, uh, yeah. So it was, it was easy to check your credit score or report at, at that time. If you are receiving public welfare assistance, you are also entitled to one additional free copy of your credit report. Again, remember that we are speaking about during a, any 12 month period. If you believe your credit report contains inaccurate information due to fraud, then you also can, uh, can get the uh, information for free. You are also entitled to a free copy of your credit report. If you meet this requirements, you have been denied credit or insurance within the past 60 days and you have placed a fraud alert on your credit reports. This is kind of cool. Now, if you live in certain states, you may be eligible for additional free credit reports. So this is uh, really this is really an important element to pay attention to. Boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about reviewing your Equifax credit report. What are the things you need to pay attention to? Now, when we talk about your credit, your experience, your, your not your experience, your Equifax credit report, what kind of information can you find? Can you actually find in that credit, uh, that credit report? Well, it really depends. But the overall, you have a, a standardized set of uh, set of uh, criteria or set of uh, items that you find in uh, an experienced credit report, in uh, in an Equifax credit report, but also in a TransUnion credit report. And this is important. Now, remember though. An Experian credit report or Equifax credit report or a TransUnion credit report is basically a summary of your unique financial history. And uh, so uh, the three nationwide credit bureaus collect and maintain a history of your credit activity as reported by all the lenders and creditors you have account with. Your credit report uh, includes important information about you, including personal information, account information, bankruptcies and accounts in collections and inquiries, which actually list the lenders and other companies that have access to your credit report. So when we talk about personal information, we're talking about your name, your social security number. If you have some kind of aliases or former names, this could also be a, you know, a possibility. And if you also have a former, former addresses and sometimes your current and former employers. So it's, well, it's one of those things where you have a, a credit report can be a, as deep and broad as possible. And when we talk about uh, account information, we are speaking about uh, payment information, account balances and limits, and dates the accounts were open or closed. And this includes the credit accounts that may be uh, in your name, such as uh, credit cards, mortgages, student loans, and uh, vehicle loans. And uh, this is cool. And as you look at your Equifax credit reports or your experience credit report or transparent credit report, you want to keep the following in mind. In the personal information section of your experience, uh, of your, not just the experience, but just your Equifax credit report, you want to ask yourself if your name is listed accurately and your address up to date. In other words, you want to think about chronology and, and also make sure that things are up to date. That's really important. You got to well ask yourself, are the accounts listed complete and accurate? And also, is it is it important to contact the lender or creditor that issued the account or the nationwide credit bureau that issued the business, the credit report in, in, in the in the first place? And so when we talk about your Equifax credit report, why is knowing uh, about your credit important? Well, the thing is that, first of all, you got to ask yourself one thing. Do you care about your Equifax credit report or do you care about all, all the three? Because the whole thing here is that when we talk about the why is knowing your knowing about your credit important, because your credit actually uh, is the foundation of your financial profile in this life, especially uh, in this era, in this uh, era where you are going to engage in all credit uh, facing facing uh, transactions, such as if you want to buy a house, like, you know, you are going to get a mortgage. If you are going to uh, apply for a credit card, if you are going to apply for a business credit card or business, even having a, an account, a business checking account or a savings or a personal checking account in some cases, 
Some, some banks and credit unions will check your credit just to make sure that you are quote unquote safe. The same thing apply when we talk about insurance companies. Insurance companies check your credit before actually uh, approving your policies in some cases. Especially when we talk about a, a, a very, uh, what we call a long tenured sort of policy, like a uh, life insurance, for instance. So they just want to make sure it's part of their risk mitigation, risk, risk mitigation policies, just to make sure that they are on the safe side of things. So it's important, therefore, to make sure that you understand what's happening in your Equifax credit report, in your experience credit report, or your TransUnion credit report. Now, if a, if a, Equifax really matters to you. Like you really, you really care. You only care about your Equifax credit report because uh, your Equifax credit score is the best. Like you know, you probably have like 700 in Equifax. You have 650 in TransUnion, and you have maybe a five. I mean, I don't know, 620 with 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 uh, with yeah. So TransUnion 650 and uh, Experian maybe 620, and your Equifax is actually the highest. So you care a lot about your uh, your experience, your uh, your Equifax report. If that's the case, then you really want to make sure that you know everything that's going on in your in your credit. So for from uh, all the accounts that are really uh, happening in your account, your account that are happen, all the accounts that are happening in your credit to uh, your personal information like your your data, your your address, and so on and so forth. It's also important to understand that when we talk about your Equifax credit report, you have to understand that if you are a victim of fraud, then you really want to make sure that you uh, put in place a, a system, uh, like a series of, uh, of measures to make sure uh, that your account is, protect is, is protected, right? So what happens here is that uh, basically uh, Equifax has a system in place where they are able to, uh, to uh, give you a fraud and active duty alerts. So basically... You let lenders know that you may be the victim of fraud or you are on active military duty. So, you know, so basically they're encouraged to take extra steps to verify your identity before granting new credit. So basically what happens here is that you can actually place a fraud alert on your Equifax credit report. And, uh, and placing a, a fraud alert or active duty alert is free. So uh, you want to choose the alert. So here is here's how it works with uh, Equifax. So choose the alert that's right for you. So it can be initial, extended, or active duty military. Then uh, depending on the type of the alert, if someone tries to get credit in your name, the creditor or lender may contact you. And then if you are contacted by your creditor or lender, confirm whether or not you made the request to get credit. And that's an important element to pay, to pay attention to. So now, which type of alert might make sense for you? Well, it really depends. So when we talk about initial fraud alert, for instance, you want to use this when you believe you are or may become the victim of fraud. So an, an initial fraud alert is free and lasts for one year, so 12 months. And then you have extended fraud alert. So you want to use this when you have been a victim of ID theft and you have completed an FTC identity theft report or police report. An extended fraud is... Alert is actually free, lasts for seven years, and removes you from credit card insurance offers for five years. And you also have a, an active duty alert, and you want to use this when you are on active military duty. An active duty alert is free, lasts for one year, and removes you from credit card insurance offers for two years. So that, that that's for two years. Now, one thing I want to say here is that when we talk about uh, all of these things, fraud alert specific. Uh, fraud alerts specifically it's all about making sure that you are protecting your identity you know at the uh, at the end anyway thank you so much for your attention i really appreciate it in today's conversation i spoke to you today about uh reviewing your uh, aquafast credit report i give you the review i mean i give you the overview the approach and now the recap thank you so much god bless you i'll see you next time until then remember stay marvelous